Statins reduce major adverse cardiovascular events and mortality among patients with diabetes, and routine use is endorsed by clinical practice guidelines. As a matter of fact, the 2014 guidelines on the treatment of blood cholesterol to reduce ASCVD specifically cites four major statin benefit groups. One of those is for primary prevention in individuals with diabetes 40 to 75 years of age who have LDL of 70 to 189 milligrams per deciliter. So what we are here to discuss are the national trends and practice level variations in statin use among patients with diabetes, insights from the NCDR Pinnacle Registry. And to do this, I am with Dr. Yesha Shui Pokorel, who is an MD, and uh, you are now at Mid-America Heart uh, Institute at the University of Missouri, and there you are T32 Cardiovascular Outcomes Research Fellow, correct? Now, when you did this, you were over at Baylor College of Medicine, and what I want to talk to you about right now is, you know, whether primary or secondary prevention, the guidelines certainly seem to support statin use. So this is an important topic, correct? Of course, yeah. So um, in 2012, it's estimated that there are about 29 million people with diabetes in the U.S., which is about 9.3% of the whole population. So I think, you know, as you mentioned earlier, so um, clinical trials have shown that statins not only reduce, you know, risks of having heart attack and other cardiovascular disease, but also death from all cause, as well as death from vascular cause. So I think it's very important to understand uh, what is the actual um, in real world practice pattern of statin use and how it varies by um, practices. We have the outpatient pinnacle registry, which is what you're using here. So you have a large group that you were able to start with to analyze, correct? How many patients? So after exclusion, our exclusion included patients with contraindications to statin, for example, for medical region, for patient preferences, or for system reasons. And we included uh, patients 40 to 75 years of age, which is what the latest guideline recommends. So with that, we ended up with about 256,000 patients with diabetes 40 to 75 years old from 187 practices, which included at least um, 30 patients in each practice. So in this large population, what did you find? So we found that about 55% of the population were receiving any statin. This is any statin, not any particular dose statin. Seems low to me. Less than ideal, so I think, uh, you know, there's a large, huge chunk of people, you know, who should receive statin and get the benefit, but, but they are not. What about variations from center to center? Were you able to, to do some studies regarding that? Right. So we did something called median rate ratio. So median rate ratio is something where uh, it helps us to quantify use of statin among two identical patients from any two random practices. So our median rate ratio was 1.62, which means there's about 62% variation in um, the use of statin between two identical patients at two random um, uh, practices. And this is after accounting for patient level risk factors, some system level factors, as well as use of non-statin lipid lowering therapy. So were you surprised at any of this data? I mean, you, you got this together, you did the analysis. When you went, were going into it, do you have any preconceived notions in terms of what that number might be or when you saw it go, this is definitely not what I expected? Right, so um, I think the overall statin use, that was not a big surprise because before, although from very, uh, you know, not as much population, we've seen that it's something around like 50, 50 to 60%. Uh, but I think what was more interesting is the variation. So 62% variation after accounting for patient factors as well as some right. system level factors means this is probably related to provider level factors. And in our experience, this is probably because of, you know, um, variation in practice patterns by the providers. So what can we do about it? You actually bring that up in the, in the paper. So providing audit and feedback to each participating you know, uh, practices, and then more focused, dedicated quality improvement initiatives so that you know, we can have more you know, guideline concordant practice. So just over half of patients with diabetes, 40 to 75, were treated with statins and wide variation and uh, so quality improvement initiatives you think really might help? Um, so I, 
I think it will help. So we recently did a, a separate study where we actually, you know, we went there and we actually delivered educational intervention. In the study, we looked at how people perceive the new cholesterol guideline. And actually, we, what we found was that after the educational intervention, uh, you know, it, it significantly improved. So I think we should do some sort of quality improvement. Um, and with a special focus, which is, which, which can address individual participants, you know, need. Right. And the fact that you have some data to back that up is really impressive. Thank you. We have for you 19 abstracts that are actually highlighting data from five NCDR hospital-based registries as well as the outpatient registry called Pinnacle that we're talking about here. Please go online and look at the interviews and see in CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions our summaries of the NCDR papers out of the AHA meeting. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.